The five number summary is an idea we've been looking at over the last week and a bit. It consists of these five different pieces that go in to try and summarize data. Five points. I wonder if you can remember them in order. Any takers? What's the first one? What's the minimum first number? Medium. It's the minimum. It's the lowest score you can see in the entire data set. Okay? So what's the minimum? Then we go sort of closer towards the middle. What do we encounter as we climb up? We hit the lower quartile, which is indicated by Q1. I'm actually going to write lower quartile there. You may recall when Mr. Dennis was introducing this, Q1 is often written as QL, L standing for lower. Okay, good. After Q1, in order, you get the median, which we also sometimes call Q2. So we know what the median is. What is significant about the median? Oh. Yeah, right. It's the very middle number. Oh. Fantastic. So you've got the middle number, which divides the scores into a bottom half and a top half, or a left and a right, just like the median strip does on a road. So you've got the median, Q1, Q2, Q3. Surprise, surprise. And this, of course, is the? the upper quartile. It's the upper quartile. Oops. There we go. Now. You've got your quartiles there. Before we get to that last uh, number, there's a particular name to the distance or the gap between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Does anyone remember what that name is called? Very good. The interquartile range is exactly what it sounds like. It's the range, the difference between the quartiles, hence interquartile. Last piece of information. Maximum. Fantastic. So you've got the minimum and the max. And just like you've got the interquartile range in here, you've got the regular range from the top to the bottom. Okay, and that's the whole distance. Once you know these five numbers, that's really nice to get an overview of a piece of a set of scores. But it's like, oh, five numbers, it's a bit of a, a headache to try and look at each of the five and try and work out what's going on. So you draw a picture. And we call that visual representation in the picture a box plot or a box and, bless you, a box and whisker plot. So, let's remember, how do we draw one of these things? Well, here's a set of data. The first thing you've got to do in order to get to a box plot or a box and whisker plot is, you need to know these five numbers, okay? Some of the bits are easy to see and some bits are harder. For example, minimum and maximum. You can state them for me right now. What are they? Four, three, four, three. Four, three. There's the minimum, three. right there, and three, and 15 is the max. So you don't have to go very far to get those two, but when you get to Q1, Q2, Q3, your quartiles, you suddenly need data that's in order. And this is just a random mess, okay? So can I give you about 30 seconds? Go ahead, can you put this data, there's, uh, what do we got here, 13 scores? Can you place them into ascending order? Go ahead and do that. So. Here's what we've got. Um, by the way, some of you actually just saw just now, I was making sure that I got all of them. I saw there were 13 scores here, so I've got to get 13 scores here. And I noticed I only had 12, so that's why I knew I missed one. So watch out for that. One of the things you can do to help you is maybe you want to cross off scores in case you want to um, make sure you absolutely don't miss any, but I didn't want to do that so you can still read it. So now I have my minimum and my max. There are an odd number of scores. So that means the median is going to be one of these scores. Which one? The middle one. Which is the middle one? Seven. So it'll be the seventh score out of 13. So if you have a look, you can count up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Interestingly, the seventh score is seven. So there's my median. Then when I go to say, okay, I want quartiles, I want quartiles, how do I do that? Okay, so I want something that will split what I've got now into four sections, this one into two, and this one into two. So have a look over here. What's the middle? Between four and five? Do I count the seven? You know the one that was the median <coughs> four? Why not? It's not part of the quartile. Okay, because it was one of the actual data points for my quartiles, right? I now take it out of the running. So therefore, Q1 is going to be between, it'll be four and a half, 
And you can make the uh, opposite sort of illustration over here. In the, here's the upper quartile, Q3, and it's going to be 9. Great. So now I know what my five numbers will be. In order, it's going to be 3, 4.5, 7, 9, and then 15. Okay. One last thing before we actually start to construct this. There were 13 scores, and you can count up from the middle and work out what's going on, or you can count from both ends. 13 is a small enough number. What if I gave you like, you know, 63 scores or something like that, and it was all actually in order, so you don't need to reorder them. 63 scores would be way too much to order. How can I quickly work out which one is the middle score? How do I do that? 63 divided by 2. So I know it's going to have to be something to do with halving, right? Because uh, I'm trying to get half on this side and half on that side. When you halve 63, um, you can tell me, what do I get? 31, 31 and a half. Okay. But we know this is an odd number of scores. So I actually want not between two scores. I want a particular score. Which one is it? 32. So you always round up. If you have trouble remembering that that's the case, okay? Think back to like a simple example. Think if you had five scores, right? You can immediately see which one is the median, okay? But if you try this approach, what would happen? Five scores, you halve it, what's that give you? 2.5, and you know you're gonna have to round up to get to the third one. Does that make sense? So this is useful, this process is useful because it saves you from having to count from both ends and basically halves the amount of time it takes. Okay. Now we're ready. Ryan. So when you're working out the quartiles, if you do 63 divided by 4, would you then do 30? Good question. I, I would avoid I would avoid doing this again. Uh, sorry, I would avoid doing it from the beginning because you don't know from the outset, am I going to include this median or not? Okay? Uh, because from the beginning, it's a question of whether this is divisible by 4 or not. So what I would advise you do is find the median in the way that was just described. And then think about it from the get-go. So now I've got six scores. Six scores. So it's going to be between the third and fourth. And six scores over there, again, will be between the third and fourth. If I went for this, right? You want to think about it this way. You've got the 30-second score as the medium. So there's the 30-second score in here. How many scores will be on the left of it? There will be 31 scores over here. And there will be another 31 over here, right? So now I think through this process of these guys, you divide by 2. That gives you 10 and a half. The number it gives you is 15 and a half, and you know to round up. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Yeah. So from there, you'd say, therefore, the 16th score. And over here, just be careful. This is the 16th score starting from 1. But now with the 16th score over here, how do I do that? The same way, it's just that I'm going to count that way rather than this way. Do you agree? Because it should be symmetrical, yeah? So you can count up 16 and you can count down 16, you'll get to the same spot, same middle. 